Well, believe it or not, I started Audio Mover over 20 years ago. And what happened, it was, it was actually kind of an accident. I had built a little recording studio. I'd been a professional musician you know, since I was a teenager. So I built this little recording studio. And after I built it, I started taking some of the old cassette tapes from rehearsals and stuff that we'd recorded when I was a younger person. And I started taking these cassette tapes and converting them into digital. I thought, well, I have the equipment, you know, just maybe I should digitize this stuff. And, and it turned out so well that I, I built a little website. Now, keep in mind, this is, this is 2000, 2001. And I built a little website and I put on there something like, if you have cassette tapes, you know, give me a call and I can turn them into digital for you. Well, amazingly, I started getting phone calls from different places around the country. People just sending cassette tapes in to, to digitize. And what happened, the, the, the volume, you know, I would just get tapes here and there. I thought, well, maybe I could make enough off this to pay my electrical bill every, every month or something like that. Well, it was amazing because after I'd done this for probably about, I don't know, six months to a year, I get this phone call from somebody in California. And this guy said, hey, I see on this website that you can convert tapes to digital. I said, yeah. And he says, well, I've got a thousand tapes that I need converted digital. I thought, what would somebody, why would somebody have a thousand tapes? Well, what I didn't realize is that there are a lot of churches around the, the world, around the country, United States, Canada, elsewhere, that will record all of their sermons. So every Sunday, every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, whenever they have sermons, they record them on cassette tapes. And so he had a thousand tapes from this one particular pastor that he needed converted to digital. And so I had, you know, I had no idea how he would do it. And I just said, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> I had no idea how I was going to do this project. Well, so he sent the thousand tapes in and I, of course I figured it out. And <clears throat> What was amazing is we finished that project and that just kept going. So over the next couple of years, we'd get calls from different churches. Where we'd have 1,000, 2,000, 5,000. And then, and then we started getting calls from government agencies and diff different organizations, universities, historical societies would start calling us with all these big tape libraries. So this went on for years, and we got, actually got really good. I, I developed these processes where we could move a lot of tapes through really quickly. And what, then, then the most amazing thing happened, it was probably, it, the call I think came in 2007, and it was from, a, from the state of New Mexico. And this person gave me a call, and, and he called over to the studio. We were still operating out of our basement at that point, but I had all these tape decks and computers, and we were running tapes through. And this person called and he said, well, we have, I just see, I see that you do these big projects. And I said, yeah, this, we do big projects all the time. He says, well, I have a lot of cassette tapes. And I said, well, we do a lot of cassette tapes. And he says, no, I'm talking about a lot of cassette tapes. And I said, so, like, what do you mean? And he says, well, I'm talking about 115,000 cassette tapes. <laughs> of course, I, I didn't, I, I said, well, you haven't scared me quite yet. What, let's talk more about this. So for the next few days, I basically sat there because I was trying to figure out how much I would charge for this. Be, because imagine, you know, you're digitizing tapes. One second times 115,000 is a lot of time. So I didn't want to be off by much. You know, I wanted to have a pretty good sense. So I was timing myself taking a tape out of a case, setting in a, you know, in the, in a tape deck, you know, running it through the whole thing. I recorded myself over and over just trying to figure out an average, how long did it actually take me to do this so I could get a really reasonable price and not kill myself. Anyway, we ended up doing this project. We put out a bid. We ended up doing this big project, 115,000 tapes. It was the biggest project we've ever done. I, as far as I know, it's the biggest project that's ever been done in the United States of that kind. And then over the years, we kept doing more projects. Uh, we never we never hit that high again. But we've done we did another project a few years ago. There was thirty thousand. So we we do that kind of thing a lot. But that doesn't mean that we don't do projects for you know local people. That you know we still have people around the country that just send us one tape. And we we back some time ago, you know, we were doing so well with cassette tapes. Of course, we branched out. 
and because we have a production studio, we we actually have a full production studio here. We'll, we've we've got all the stuff to do: audio tape, videotape, you name it. And we've we kind of perfected this process a long time ago. And there's you know there are other companies around the country that do this kind of stuff, but this was this was a passion of mine since I was young because I was a professional musician and I I was into audio and video production. So. So we take this very seriously, and we really work to get you a really good product, and, it, and, and it's because it is kind of a kind of a passion. But we've just be, you know we've 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 really perfected this process over the years, so that we can get a lot of things through and get them through with really high quality. And anyway, so that's kind of the origin story of the of the company. We're located in St. George, Utah. You know, we were. We were based in Denver for a long, long time. And honestly, we just got kind of tired of the, of the weather and the big city and just decided to move the headquarters to St. George, Utah, which if you're not familiar with where St. George, Utah is, you, are you familiar? Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar with St. George, Utah, it's basically 90 minutes to two hours outside of Vegas, just on the other side of the border in Utah. And so it's it's a beautiful place. Uh, we love it here. And so, and this is kind of amazing. When we were in Denver, you know, the business is basically run through the mail. We we did all of our project from people shipping things, and we'd ship them back from all over the country. In the entire time we were in Denver, Colorado, we did projects for people in Denver. Don't get me wrong, but I think maybe in the in the nearly 20 years we operated, uh, we, the, the headquarters is in Denver. I think we had five people that ever dropped anything off at the studio. Since moving to St. George, we get people all the time. I mean, it's we, we've had many, many times that uh, just in this last year. And it's it's unbelievable how, you know, we're in this smaller community now and we get more and more people literally coming by and dropping things off. But anyway, that's what that's that's kind of the origin story of, of Audio Mover. <laughs> 